Good morning. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip on Wednesday, the 11th of November. I um, hope you're all well. Uh, this is going to be the Masters um, preview. So I've had some bets on the Masters. I've put them in the Telegram group. Um, I have got three pod horses for Kempton as well. Um, and I'll go through them. Um, well, news yesterday, Sam came home. We are... Um, Getting another dog. Yes, she went to the RSPCA. There's a spaniel over there, four-year-old spaniel that was found, um, I think, mistreated and abandoned in a yard. Um, has had some puppies. Um, and, um, yeah, we're having it. Sam, she came home and said, uh, showed me a picture and a video of this little spaniel in a cage. Said uh, They said, we can have her, so we're having her. I did it for you. She said, you need a dog. So she did it for me, no, not for herself at all. Uh, she said, when things get back to normal, I'll be going over to Malta a lot on my own and don't like leaving you on your own. You need a dog. Um, and then, obviously, people started asking the name and it all just got into a state of disrepair on Twitter, started by um, Steve Williamson, who actually had quite a funny one, Spaniel Levy. Are you going to call it Spaniel Levy? Um, and then it just, I mean, some of them were just dreadful. Um, none more so than Lord Dio, who you just let yourself down, son, with some dreadful ones. Did pull it a little bit out of the bag with Maurizio Puccettino. And I agree with you then, plagiarism, lots of people jumped on that after you. But dreadful, you lot really need to find something else to do. Um... I've got to mention, I know I mention it every day, but the 109, this election, it's it's just madness, isn't it? it? You know when they say things are too good to be true? 109 Biden, when you read the rules on the projected electoral votes the market settled, there is no substance to any of these claims, no matter what people are saying. I've, I've had a right old look into this. Um, and you read that 274 page or 30, whatever it was, affidavit. I had a shimmy through that this morning. Um of people just saying they saw this and saw that. Nothing's got any substance to it. I can't see how it's not a nailed on um winner. I think I think a lot of that price rise is people who've probably got quite a lot of money, obviously five hundred million plus market tied up, um, just removing it at any price, um, because they don't want to wait and hang around and probably sick of the shenanigans going on. But the 109 looks like you can get yourself um, a bit of interest, and this is not financial advice. You do whatever you want to do. Um, just looks madness to me. Um, and then um, somebody took issue with me saying about posting your results on Twitter. I, I preempted it by saying you're free to do what you want. Well, my only view is. I don't know what you get out of it. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, carry on. I'm not, I wasn't having a go at anybody. I just said, I don't, for me, I don't get it. I don't get what putting a, a weekly win or a weekly loss to complete strangers, um, and that genuinely is what most people on Twitter are. Um, I don't really get it. I just think you invite the wrong type of response and the wrong type of people, but you crack on. Don't worry about it. People, honestly, there's what is going on in the world. Um, yeah, and then the final thing, that video, which I did re didn't realise, I hadn't seen it before, the bloke uh, taking his bike through the level crossing, I just found it amusing, that he, at the end, he's, he's, there's a video, it's on my Twitter from Jeremy Vine, of a bloke hauling his bike through a level crossing while the barriers are down, and then the train comes, and he waves his arm at the train driver as if, as if he's in the wrong, um, but it is from 2017, I didn't realise that, I, somebody tweeted it yesterday, um, Stephen Mangan, I think it was. Uh, and uh, I just saw that, and, and I hadn't seen it before, but madness, the world is bonkers. Um, right, anyway, let's do the golf. So Masters 2020, the old club championship. Uh, it's the first, first ever November Masters. Uh, of course, we'll be playing longer and softer. Uh, greens um, with the sub-air system, they can still get them up to 13, so on the stint meter. Um, and the key sort of info coming out so far is that yes it's playing longer and softer and the chipping is a little bit easier around the greens because there's a little bit more grass they've left the they've not been able to cut it quite so tight with the damper conditions and obviously not as much growth in November as you would get in uh, the spring um, 
I have absolutely no doubts that Augusta in general will try and make it play like the club championship it always does, as close as possible to an April event. Um, the longest the course played in recent years was 2015, and um, more on that in a minute. I'll reference a certain player later with that. Uh, the market overview in general, it's very cramped at the top. Um, you know, obviously we've now got four, five, six world-class players who are there every week. Johnson, DeChambeau, Thomas, McElroy, um, you know, Schofield. There's a, there's a little cup because there's a little sort of concentration of players who you, you would say are way ahead of the best. Um, so the first five in the betting only separated by four and a half points on the exchange course form here you know i keep calling it a club championship it is the only major that returns to the same venue you do often see the same winners course form here is massive compared to the other majors it is the only one who returns there that we haven't had a first time winner since 1979 um and i think before that it was 1935 so that shows you how often people turn up and win first time if not been there um of the last 20 winners, all had previously finished in the top 40 at Augusta before. 13 of those 20 had had a top 10 finish at Augusta, and 7 of the last 20 had previously won at Augusta. So it is a tournament that you can chalk out half the field almost into instantaneously. I've seen other people putting up, you know, people like Morikar and that, just think they haven't been there before. So I just put a line through them. I can't, you know, that stat will be broken, I'm sure, but from a betting medium, not for me. Um, so the market leaders you've got uh, market leader Bryson DeChambeau bookies best price of 8 exchange 9 uh, if you've got any interest in golf probably sport unless you've been under a rock um, you cannot fail to hear this guy's name almost daily um, obviously he's bulked himself up trying to hit the ball as far as possible um, and you'd think that from the talk he was winning by 20 shots every week with the hype surrounding him it's just simply not true. Sure, he went and won the US Open and won it well. Uh, I think his strategy that week of being aggressive and turning up and whacking it round the golf course caught the field out who typically turned up and played with caution for a US Open. That tends to be the the, the approach at the US Open is caution first. Um, I expect next year at the US Open we'll see more players grip it and rip it a bit. But outside that win, his other four appearances in the last five starts are a miscut, 50th, 25th and 8th. He's hardly blowing the world apart. He's not ripping people to pieces. He's not beating everybody. Good player, yes. Capable of winning it, yes. 8-1, to one, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. I'd much rather lay a place here for him. Um, drives it well and draws the ball which is required at Augusta but Augusta is so much more than that you've got to get the ball in the right place his approach play compared to McElroy Thomas Johnson is way down his touch around the greens is down compared to them um, but he does hold out well from sort of 5-10 feet which will be required this week but overall I can easily put a line through him around here um, if he wins so be it you know but there's just not I can't see a year ever in this tournament that I could back him at eight to one against the sort of strength of field at the top we've got now. His best finish so far in three goes here is twenty first <coughs> uh, in twenty sixteen. Um I just I just think the eight to one is ridiculous. I just cannot I couldn't as I say, lay in a place for me is the way to go. Um I don't think he'll be I don't think he'll be even close to it. That's my truth. Uh you know, amazing in golf. It's like we've at the driving range all of a sudden. Oh, look how far that guy hits it, as opposed to what it actually takes to win. Uh, next best is uh, Dustin Johnson. Bookies price seventeen to two. Exchange nine point eight. And here is a man with course form. Uh, last far five Masters, second, tenth. Uh, didn't play the three year ago when he fell down the stairs when he was favourite the eve be eve of the tournament. Um, in his rented house, he fell down the stairs, done his foot in or something. Uh, so second, tenth, didn't play, fourth and sixth. Won a major, obviously I think a lot of people, me included, think he should have won more. His, his form this year has been outstanding, played five tournaments, first, second, third, sixth, second. Uh, I'd go as far to say if he plays well, he wins. Um, I would guess. Uh, he had a break for COVID-19, got I think he got that and came back and finished second last week in Houston, albeit a weak field. Um, but he has every attribute, and I'm sure that he will win a Masters one day. 
everything looks good for him this week and certainly of the two market leaders I would prefer him however I'm not comfortable backing players at single figures to win golf tournaments of this magnitude so uh, it's maybe one that if you've got a bet that you've got to save your stakes on him um, but I've got better betting opportunities remember I like to bet on price not about winning um, I just don't want to back him at that price but I think he's I think he's got a fantastic chance this week if you if you want to back a market leader I, you know I don't think you can go far wrong with him um, next is John Rahm in the betting bookies 10 best price 11.5 uh, 10 best price 11.5 in exchange got to have a huge chance arguably one of the most solid players at the moment you know in all departments alongside Dustin Johnson uh, he's done everything the last four years bar win a major and surely that will come I think he will win a major um, he's finished top 10 here last two years he's got a scoring average of one and a half under par 70.5 around my only squiggle with him is that his major performance overall um, he's patchy at best. He hasn't. He's not been within three of the lead going into a final round. Uh, I think he needs to be in the heat of one of these before he wins one. Um, I think is. I still think there's a little question mark over his temperament. Um, did play. I don't know whether anybody saw the the skimmed one across the water for all in one last night on sixteen in the practice round. Um, so I think he's obviously feeling chipper. But I would like to see the guy compete first before I have my money on him at these sort of prices. Um, and, you know, being being in the heat of a major, he has got previous of of making bad decisions, losing his lid a little bit. Uh, and obviously a major of this magnitude would test that to to the absolute limit and perhaps he needs to go through that maybe lose one and learn to win that way um, I'm not saying he can't win but just uh, again at the price I wouldn't want to get involved with that squiggle question mark for me uh, next is Justin Thomas bookies 12 exchange 13.5 my long held view and I've mentioned it many times to other people is I think as a golfer all round, this is the best of the top players when he's playing well. I think, I think, I think he is the man who could go on and and sort of get the world number one spot and hold on to it for a while. Uh, I love the way he plays golf. Love his attitude to game, but and it, I, you know, I mean, you know, I say that, and he hasn't gone on and done that. I said it a couple of years ago that I thought he would be the man, but obviously Johnston's ahead of him in the rankings. Rahm, so for some reason he hasn't done that, but he's still a fabulous golfer. Um, uh, maybe he just looks a better player. You know, he 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 looks technically very good. Um, he certainly can win. It'll be lots of people's favourites here, I'm certain. Um, and and I'm you know I'm fairly sure he'll be up there. Uh, but he's not the winner for me. Uh, the fact he fades the ball as opposed to draws it puts me right off. Uh, he's a natural fader of the ball, moves it left to right. Here you need to move it right to left. Think people like Trevino and Montgomery round Augusta. Uh, he's not had an Augusta top 10 in four appearances and I think that's the reason why um, admittedly he's got better every year but I still think it'd be a few more years for him to actually find a way to play this course to win it um, against the people he's playing against it, to get a fade to, if you're a natural left to right player to play that golf course is very difficult um, I actually see it as a venue he won't conquer um, playing the players he's playing at the minute Um not saying he won't be up there, but I think it's really difficult for him to win with that shape of shot. Um, so I can quite easily chalk him off. If he wins, he wins. You know, it's it, it's a field. They're all good players, but that's my thinking um, with Thomas. Next is McElroy, also bookies 12, exchange 14. And personally, I think if there is a year that McElroy wins the Masters, he needs it for the Grand Slam, it will be this year. This will be the week. Uh, the course totally fits his game. He is a drawer of the ball, high drawer. Um, a lot of his big wins have been on longer, softer courses, and I think he will absolutely fancy it this week um, if he doesn't beat himself. that's the, He's another one he can beat himself. He's just got a great chance, um, and we won't know until the gun goes off, you know, whether he beats himself. You know, that's what he did at Portrush in the Open at, in Northern Ireland. Um, I do think the fact that Going into this, the, all the attention is on Bryson, where you know McElroy has been the one people talk about for years, particularly with regard to the Grand Slam. But I think now it seems to have moved to Bryson, and is he going to use a 48-inch driver? How far he's going to hit it? So 
it must help him. He's going to be, you know, he's coming with that, always being high profile. He's a little bit more under the radar now. Uh, he has stated, which he rarely does, that he's totally happy with his game, whereas previous years, always something not quite right and not padding quite well enough, or I want my driving to be better. He says his game is good. Um, and I, you know, I think that where it used to affect him having that one element probably at the back of his mind, he feels happy. I think he's absolutely made for this week. I am no Rory fan at all, um, but he's got five top tens in the last six Masters. Admittedly, didn't threaten to win any of them. Um, he has led here by five, six shots. You know, eight, nine years ago, solid form the last twelve months. I think he's the best value of the main fancy protagonists, uh, and I think if he doesn't win it this week then he's going to find it really hard to win it. I think it's absolutely set up for him to win that to win this this week. Um, and then next in the betting, what's that? One, two, three, four, five is Brooks Kupka. Um, bookie 16, exchange 19. And for me, he has to be a bet at the price this year. Um, last year, he'd have been in the top three in the betting. Knee trouble, bit of patchy form. Um, but he came back and finished fifth last week. He's not shy on confidence, self-belief. He, you know, he said last week he would have won. He changed his driver pre-tournament, um, didn't play well on the Friday, Saturday, changed it back to his old driver for the weekend, shot 65-65 to finish fifth. He's clearly got his game back. Um, it won't, the old driver will be in use this week. He was second here last year, four majors in the bag, not scared of winning. I just think he's too big a price compared to the others, um, 19 on the exchange in particular. Um, I think he's got a bit of a point to prove. I don't think he's a massive fan of Bryson, um, given the last 12 months. And I think if he gets a sniff, he won't panic. Um, you know, he's one of those he'll hang around and it's sort of almost Nicholas and Woods like wait for others to make mistakes. Um, so I think Brooks Kupka, again, at the price, is definitely a play. Um, Xander Schofel, uh, he makes up the sort of top seven if you like before you get a break in the betting um and he's another i've said will win a major really good all-round player um but the facts the facts he keeps getting beat it's simple as that he just doesn't win enough and and he is in danger of perhaps being a matt kuchar like money making machine um but not a serial winner for that reason alone at the prices this week you know given what he's up against and with the course suiting players like mcelroy moore um, I can just pass him over, so it's one of those not for me, as they say. Could well win it. You know, any of these players are capable of winning it. They're, they're top, top players in the game, but um, at the prices, you know, and that's what it all comes down to. I couldn't be back in um, Schofel at, at 16, I think, and 18, 19 on the exchange. Not for me. Um, so that's the top seven in the betting, and then, as I say, then we get the gap in the in the market and this is for me where the value is uh, and I've got a couple of plays that I really like and I've put my money down already um, posting them in the in the telegram group through this week um, Patrick Cantlay for me is a bet he's 25 at the bookies exchange 30 uh, he won three weeks back with the likes of Ram and Thomas around him um, and didn't get phased you know, one comfortably. He draws the ball. He has everything needed to win here. More so than for me than Thomas. Top twenty in driving distance. Top twenty in putting form, ten to fifteen feet, which you need well at Augusta. Um, he did hit the front at Augusta last year when Tiger won it. Wobbled, admittedly. I think I can excuse anybody wobbling with the Tiger mania that was building um, in that week. That was horrific for me. Um, so who wouldn't and I'm sure he will have learnt from that I think he's built for a major I really do I think this course suits him he's shot 64 around here I think he could have a really big week um, Cantlay um, and at, at 30 on the exchange um, is definitely a bet for me uh, and then um, Bubba Watson uh, Bubba is 40, 38, 40 on the exchange. Um, Bubba's had his own demons, weight loss, playing that pink ball, lack of confidence. Um, but he has openly said he's in a much better place now mentally. He's won here twice. He's a player that does do well at courses he likes. I think he gets a bit homesick. I remember when he came over and played in France and he, he just, because he was away from America, he hated it. I think he likes to be and have his home comforts and be in certain places. And Augusta is one of those places that he feels at home. His game's trending in the right direction. Top 10s in the last two starts. 
one of those players will either be there or he'll miss the cut. Um, but I have a sneaky feeling it's going to be the form of the soft conditions. He hits, a, works the ball, hits a high ball flight. All these things I think will suit him. So it could be a big week for Baba. Um, so I think at, at 38 40 is a bet. Uh, the next one for me, my eyes popped out when I saw the price. Um, Justin Rose, 66 at the bookies, 90 on the exchange. Uh, in my opening preamble, I said the course played longest in 2015. Two players separate themselves from the field, got caught on the last day. Uh, Rose did, but it was Spieth and Rose. Spieth went on and won it, um, dazzled the world that year. Rose finished runner-up and Mickelson came and caught him up on the last day. Um, admittedly, back then, Rose was in better form than he is now and he had that ridiculous equipment change. You know, totally unnecessary. How much money do these guys need? Um, went from TaylorMade to Honma. He's gone back again, ditched that. He's got one of the best on-course attitudes in the game, one of the best golf swings in the game. He's patient, he's disciplined. Prior to that equipment change, the four years previous, last year he had the equipment change, missed the cut here. But prior to that, he was 12th second, 10th second here. Only out the top 20 in two of the last 10 Masters. As I say, one of those was last year missing the cut. And I'm just writing that off as, as the aforementioned equipment shambles. A 75%, 80% rose will compete here. Uh, I'm convinced of it with his course form, the way he plays the game. Um, and even if he doesn't win 66 to 1 and 90, a ridiculous price is for one of the most consistent players in the game. Um, top 20 out, top twenty last time out, a couple of weeks back. Um, may hint that his game's not too far from being back to where it be on a course that he's going to love turning up at. Uh, price is simply too big. Rose 66 and at the bookies 90. Um, and the final one for a little dabble, just because if you don't, you'd hate yourself. Um, and you have to include him is Tiger. Tiger bookies 45, exchange 60. You know, he loves it here. He can't, can't take that away. What, won it five times? He'll be looking to match Jack Nicholas's six. The place makes him play well. Even, you know, he's defending champion. Can't forget that. He won it last time. Uh, even when he came back a few years from injury, sort of rushed back from injury and played here, he still got himself in amongst the leaders then um, before fading slightly. And, and he had a bit of a dodgy drop or something. I seem to remember he dropped in the wrong place. Um, but you just cannot put a line through Tiger or Augusta at 40 to 1 plus. And, and one of the reasons why I want to play him on the exchange, if he does start well or get it going, the market will almost certainly implode and overreact. So you'd be able to get out. Um, obviously, that relies on him playing. Well, he hasn't been great this year, but it's Augusta. And I can't I can't not have something on him. Um just more as a trading angle on the exchange, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until tomorrow morning, see what the price is, and I will look to play him as a trade um, tiger because it will overreact. You know, not big money; it'll be small money, but just maybe one that um, you can get in and, and get yourself a nice position um, on him um, relatively quickly if he starts well, in particular. Uh, I genuinely, other than that, cannot see above the past those for the winner. My, you know, these are my opinions, my thoughts could be wrong. Uh, people are saying Patrick Reed, who has won here, but other than that, he's not great here. His figures aren't great, other than that one win. It's sort of 32nd, 40th. Um, and the US Open showed he's fragile. A lot of people like Fee now. I've said before and talked about golf, he's just not a winner for me. The guy just doesn't win, so I just couldn't have him. I can't have fragile people, I can't be doing with him. Um, Murakawa, good player, but it's his first time here. Jason Cockrack playing well, but another one his first time here. Hits it a long way. Could be a sort of surprise first round leader bet, something like that, but not for me as a winner. Um, Day, another one, playing okay, but just not a winner for me these days. Always got something wrong with him and he you know, gets up there and gets vertigo or whatever it may be. Webb Simpson, probably not good enough tee to green to win here. Fantastic putter. Um, you know, done really well. Good player, Webb Simpson, but I just I don't think his game suits this golf course. Uh, and Tyrrell Hatton, I think people are barking mad. I think, he, yes, he may well be one of, if not the most improved players in the last 12 months, but that's a massive jump to uh, winning round here. Um, and at the price, I think the price is mental. Like I'd, I'd, want, I'd want 40, 50 Tyrrell Hatton to be getting involved, certainly not 28. 
Um, <clears throat> and one player I've had a few uh, throwaway quid on at a big price, just because he's a really good ball striker. Um, plays okay here when he did play it. Um, but his ball striking is is right for this golf course. Uh, and I just think he's too big. Is Corey Connors, who is 150 at the bookies and 400 on the exchange. So my, my master's bet, although I fancy... Um, I think Thomas has got a great uh, Johnson's got a great chance. I've not bet him. Um, I've had a little bit on McElroy as a cover. I've backed Kupka. I've backed Cantlay. I've backed Watson. I've backed Rose. A little bit on Woods with a view to trade it, and a little bit on Connors to um, just in case you know another one if four hundred if he goes well. Put good ball striker. He's going to shorten up. Um, but my my sort of three main tournament bets, if you like, are Cantlay, Watson, and Rose, um, and I've covered on McElroy because I do think I do think this could be his week. So that is it. That is my uh, Masters preview um, for anybody who's interested. I might have been talking to myself for a few while, for a few minutes, um, and then we've got the um, horses, pod horses. I've got three: uh, Kempton four o'clock bull ace. Kempton 5.35, Kezana, and Kempton 8.05, Al Coote. Uh, we had three winners out of the uh, eight horses yesterday, including Drew Main Legend at 8.11, which was lovely. So we made a little, nice little profit of about four, four and a half points to Betfair SP on the wind market yesterday, a little bit on the place. So still running along nicely. Um that's it. Enjoy your Wednesday and I'll be back with you all tomorrow.